Right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our live Q and A. Uh, just to uh, let you know, people are just come, uh, being let into the room at the moment, and some there's some connectivity issues with some people. So uh, we're just going to wait a few moments as that as people start to enter the room. Uh, the only thing, just to, to run you through how we do this, um, we uh, uh, please keep your uh, your audio and your video off, and uh, and then you can. Uh, 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 and then just please use the the chat space uh, to uh, to post through your questions, and uh, we'll get to it at the very end. We're just going to quickly start with a brief uh, a brief introduction about the experience. We're going to run you through, show you some visuals, some pictures from previous experiences as well, uh, before we get to your questions. And hopefully, we'll have uh, we'll have lots of them, and we have a lot of time to actually go through that. Uh, so uh, feel free to uh, to just post your questions as you're thinking about them, uh, and as we go through the presentation, or the introduction rather, and uh, and then we're we're happy to do that. And uh, sorry, I was just I was just saying for those of us who just just make sure that the uh, that the microphones are all on uh, on mute. Uh, that would be great. Uh, thank you for that. Okay, cool. And it's just so that we don't we don't interrupt. All right, great. So uh, introduction to Annapurna. Uh, you can actually kind of see. Annapurna behind me. It's actually not the, well, I'm trying to point at it, but it's actually that one all the way in the distance back there. Um, and uh, Annapurna, uh, Annapurna is an 8,000 meter mountain, so it's a gigantic mountain. Um, and of course, we're not going to the top. This is trekking uh, to the base camp. Uh, Annapurna is one of the most spectacular experiences that we offer. And actually, it was one of the first trips that Life Happens Outdoors ever did. It was actually we did it in our first year, and it was the third trip that we did. So, uh, and we've been doing it ever since. It's uh, it's actually one that I personally look forward to every single year, um, uh, because it's just this incredible combination of trekking and culture. We're also in the Himalayas, but it's not it's not the the uh, the touristy kind of Himalayas. It's uh, it's a bit more rugged, a bit more out there, and it's really uh, it's really one of those exceptional experiences. And at the same time, it's also an experience that people feel uh, that they can uh, that they can really do. Right? It's great for first timers, uh, but it's also good for experienced trekkers because the scenery is amazing. It is a bit of a challenge, but it's a very very doable challenge. So uh, I'm going to just jump straight into uh, this uh, our, our our little presentation here. Uh, I'm not going to take too long with it, and then we can get straight to your questions. Right. So if technology does not fail me, you should be looking at a screen that says uh, Annapurna Base Camp Trek. So uh, the way that we run uh, we run this our experience is that it's a combination of uh, 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 you know, uh, there's there's always a cultural element involved as well, and for us, there is no bigger center of culture than Kathmandu, and this is where the experience actually starts. So, uh, on the very first day of our trip, uh, we pick you up from the airport. That's me, usually me personally, uh, and uh, and we are able to do a city tour of Kathmandu, including here you can see the Budana Stupa, which is uh, one of the biggest stupas in the world. Uh, it's a really vibrant and, and really beautiful place. Um, and also, uh, there's also the famous uh, uh, monkey temple as well. And there are literally monkeys here. Um, and so we spend, we spend the day just shuttling you from the airport. Uh, we, do, uh, we do a city tour. Uh, depending on when you arrive, we kind of get you to, to, to catch up with the rest of the group. And then that evening, we have a, a, a meeting together uh, where we do a briefing about the, the experience before uh, we actually start the following day. Um, so here's a, here's a kind of a little map of, uh, of, uh, of the area that we're going to be trekking in. And the aim is to get to ABC, which is all the way up there uh, at the top, uh, as you can see. Um, and what we do is, so the, the following day from Kathmandu, we board a flight, uh, a local flight to Pokhara, which is uh, a very cool city, which we won't get to explore on the way out, but we will get to explore on the way back. And then we take a, a, a private car to Nayapul, which is all the way at the bottom. And that's our starting route right over there, which is a trek from Nayapul uh, to Gundruk. And uh, which is which is a really uh, interesting thing. One of the things I love about Annapurna, and you can kind of see it in the map here, is that we actually start very deep in the rainforest, and then we gradually start to move up into the different atmospheres. 
And uh, some of the things that you're likely to see even on the first day are some of the, uh, the monkeys that are, that are uh, uh, in, in the rainforest. And, uh, and, and actually it's quite a spectacular view. And this is Gandruk uh, overlooking Annapurna South. This is where we're going to be spending our very first night. The first day is, 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 is actually a long day, but it's long mostly because we've flown in. Uh, we, we, we just briefly change our clothes, uh, get ourselves ready, leave some stuff in Pokhara that we don't need, and then we get straight onto the trail. So that's what makes the day feel quite long. But actually, it's, it's quite a manageable day. And in, in the end, it ends up usually being a short, a sh like a half day, but it, it's a long day just because of the travel. Um, and we spend the night in a tea house in this beautiful cultural village. Uh, and we'll also have the opportunity to explore it. Um, so it's, it's one of, and, and the views that when you wake up in the morning, because we usually arrive in the evening. So the views that you see are actually in the morning uh, and it's quite spectacular. First views on Annapurna South, Himchuli, and of course, Machu Puchari, which is the fishtail mountain. Uh, day two is a trek from Gandruk to Chumrung. It actually looks quite short on the map, but there's a bit of a down and then kind of a back up again. So, uh, and there's a lot of that on the Annapurna Trail, lots of kind of downs and then ups again. It's not just consistently uphill. Um, and that's actually quite a, a bit of a relief. Um, it's, also, it's also very cultural. And what I, what I like especially about this trail is that it's still very rural and very rugged. So, when you're when we're actually trekking what we call you know trekking trails these are actually commuter trails between villages where people are farming and going about their daily lives so we actually get to trek in between that which is very different from say going to everest base camp where because of the sheer number of trekkers a lot of the local culture has now geared towards servicing trekkers so what used to be a farming place would suddenly turn into a coffee shop in the annapurna region it's not like that it's still very much uh, uh, what you know, what, how it was, um, and and of course you start to get to see some of the bigger mountains as we start to get closer to the Annapurna Sanctuary, and this is the famous Machu Puchari or Fishtail Mountain, where it's believed that the god uh, Shiva resides, and it's uh, it's quite a it's quite a spectacular thing. It literally looks like a fish, and we're going to be seeing Machu Puchari literally every single day on the trail, but just from a different angle, which is one of the and this is one of the most iconic mountains in the Himalayas. Um, our, our third day on the trail is kind of where we start to go into the sanctuary. And it's one of the, it's one of the few days where it's actually a, 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 a full day of trekking, where we have lunch at a tea house that isn't where we're going to be sleeping. Uh, and you can see it's going from Chumrung to Duban. Uh, still very much in the rainforest, still a little bit of an up and down, but we are starting to gain a little bit of altitude here, reaching as high as uh, almost 2,000, uh, 2,200 meters. So starting to gain a little bit of altitude as we're getting ourselves into the sanctuary. And you can start to see how the environment starts to change a little bit um, as we're getting a little bit closer to, uh, to the camp. And of course, uh, of course you, uh, <laughs> you can't be in the Himalayas without going over these suspension bridges and the Annapurna Base Camp Trek is actually very famous for their suspension bridges because the longest suspension bridge in the Himalayas uh, is newly built. It's only two years old and it's, uh, it's on the Annapurna Base Camp Trek and we actually get to see it on the way back because um, uh, we take a different route on the way back. So, and we actually get to walk over it, which is always very exciting. Um, but, and, and as you can see, it's like the, the, the trail is extremely diverse. So uh, we went from the rainforest, now we're over the, the glacier uh, rivers, and soon we'll be up walking just by the glaciers themselves. Um, and so day four is uh, Dovan to MBC. MBC stands for Machu Puchari Base Camp, and Machu Puchari is actually the uh, the fishtail uh, mountain, but Machu Puchari is what it's referred to in, in, in local dialect, in Nepali. Um, and, and this is actually where we start to exit the greenery and start to really get ourselves up into the altitude. Um, and, 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 and so you can really see that the environment is starting to, to change. And, and actually, on, 
uh, there's no, this is, this would be, I wouldn't say the most, the most challenging day, but I would say this is the day where we get the most vertical gain. So on previous days, we we're kind of going up 200 meters or 300 meters in vertical. Uh, on this particular day, we actually get close to a thousand meters of, of vertical dis difference from where we were staying the previous night. So it's, it's really interesting to, it, it's not challenging in the sense that we're going to be walking slowly. So there's, you know, taking spectacular pictures and enjoying our time together. But uh, you, do, you will, of course, uh, feel it that we are starting to move up, which is really cool. And then we have MBC to ABC, which is, uh, so Machu Puchari Base Camp to Annapurna Base Camp. And you can kind of see why it's called the Annapurna Sanctuary. Um, it's literally surrounded by, uh, uh, by, by mountains. And you just, there's this tiny little valley that lets us in. Uh, we leave Machu Puchari Base Camp usually quite early in the morning, so around four o'clock. Uh, so that we can just do the short trek, because it's actually only a one and a half hours to two hour trek from Machu Puchare to Annapurna Base Camp. Uh, and it's just so that we can catch the sunrise uh, in Annapurna Base Camp. And you, you really don't see anything quite as spectacular as, as a sunrise from Annapurna Base Camp. The, the, and I'll show you some pictures of that. I just The map also shows us that we're going to go, so we go from MBC to ABC and then back down to Bamboo. And here are some of the pictures from uh, Annapurna Base Camp uh, from one of our teams. This was in 2018. Uh, so as you see, we got a little bit of snow, which was different from 2019, where it was actually completely dry over here. But it was quite, and this was actually 2017 here, one of our first trips. And as you can see, it's much drier. And that's Annapurna in the background. It's the south face. It's a very imposing mountain. Uh, it's an 8,000 meter mountain. So to put it into perspective, the highest mountain in the Alps in the European Alps is 4,810, so almost half of the size of what we're looking at here. And the, the base camp itself is at 4,130 meters. So it's, it's quite high up, but when you're looking at these kinds of proportions, it's not very high up compared to what's around. Uh, and here's just another uh, really beautiful shot that uh, was taken when we were uh, at Annapurna Base Camp just as the sun was starting to hit. Of course, there's a bit of an edit to it, but uh, it, it just kind of gives you the idea of just how impressive this place really is. Um, and then we have a bit of a treat. So we, we head back down to Bamboo after ABC and then the following, and that's where we spend the night. Um, so big drop in altitude, people tend to feel good about that. It's mostly going down. Uh, and then we stop at Jinu, and Jinu is actually a cool place because it's, uh, we spend the night there, and it's actually famous for hot springs. <laughs> so uh, the hot springs are really cool. It's, uh, they're natural hot springs that have been put into, uh, into these uh, pools. So you can see that there's a river running, but they've created these kind of uh, cement pools to trap the water so that we can have a swim. So bring your bathing suits, super, super recommended. Uh, and finally, we head down to Naya Pool. So this is the, the following day and we get to uh, cross the bridge. Uh, this is the longest bridge, uh, suspension bridge in the Himalayas. So you can see it's quite high, it's quite big, and it's always really fun to take pictures on it. Uh, and, it's, and, and although it looks, uh, as you can see, it looks quite long, but actually we just do a short portion of it on foot and then we're picked up by, uh, by car and taken down to Pokhara where we spend the night and also get a chance to visit this really vibrant city that has a lot going on. There's there are usually yoga classes, you can get on a boat. Uh, it's a really fun place and we'll have dinner together with our support staff as well, uh, who would have been with us on, on, the, uh, on the trip and just um, there to, 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 to help us with our duffel bags. And we just, usually what we do is we, uh, we have a, a, a dinner together in the town to kind of just thank them as well. And, uh, and, and then it's free time the following morning uh, before we fly back to Kathmandu. And, uh, and then we also have, for those of us who arrived late on the first day, we'll also have the opportunity to see some of the things that, um, that we, would, we didn't uh, have a chance to see on the first day. Um, and then after that, it's, uh, it's back to, uh, it's back to, um, uh, to uh, shuttling you all back to your, uh, uh, to your uh, to, to the airport for um, uh, for your flights back home. Uh, so this is kind of the trip in a nutshell. Uh, I didn't want to go uh, too long on it. It's it's one of the most epic experiences, uh, really, that we that that we do. Annapurna is is really a uh, kind of a, a, 
incredible blend of culture. It's uh, it's good for first timers. The, the the views are spectacular. The walking is considerable, but it's very manageable. Um, we do it in a way in which uh, we we keep the days a, a sh well not short, but we try to shorten. Uh, the sections of walking as much as possible so that we walk for a bit, stop for tea house uh, at a tea house, have a break, walk a little bit more. We're very keen on making sure that we get a lot of pictures um, and, and just make this, at the end of the day, it's, it's adventure, but you're also on your holidays, right? So we want to make it as fun and as, uh, uh, and as uh, enjoyable as possible, but also uh, to really get the most out of the challenge that is uh, trekking in the Himalayas. And if, if you really had to, uh, in my opinion, at least, if you really had to choose just one trek that you were going to go on in the Himalayas in Nepal, I, I really think it would be this one. Everest is wonderful, and there are so many other treks as well, but um, Annapurna just has that combination of just pure ruggedness, uh, not too crowded. Uh, you've got the sanctuary, which is really something special, and, uh, and, and yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's uh, pretty, much, uh, pretty much it. So... Um, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll kind of open the floor a little bit to questions and the way that we run this for those of you who are just joining is um, just you can feel free to either uh, private message the host or private message me or just plug in your questions to the chat group and we'll start to take those one by one. And the first question I have here is uh, I'll read them out loud as well so people know what they are, uh, but I won't mention the names if you've sent it privately. So uh, what is the temperature like on this trip? Uh, right, so the temperature is uh, is, is actually, uh, it varies quite considerably. So for most days, uh, especially for in, the, in the early days, uh, walk, trekking in your shorts and a t-shirt are pretty much all you're going to really need. And you may just need a light, uh, 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 like a kind of a sweater um, in order to just, uh, to just, you know, when we, when we stop and there's a bit of shade or if a bit of weather comes in, a little bit of wind, uh, you could just have that on you. Uh, but uh, so, so you can expect in Celsius for it to be uh, anywhere in the region of between uh, 20 and 30 for the first two to three days. Uh, of course, once we get to Machu Puchari, which is the higher altitude environment, uh, that starts to change quite dramatically. And uh, we've, we have had snow at Machu Puchari base camp. And so that 1000 meter elevation gain that we get between Devan and Machu Puchari is um, really does change the environment. Uh, and, and at that point, we can be looking at temperatures during the day of around five, it could be anywhere between five and 10 degrees Celsius over. Uh, at night, it can dip as low as, uh, as 10 degrees uh, below. Uh, and, and, and of course, uh, once we do the trek for the coldest portion is usually the very beginning when we just leave MBC, uh, heading to Annapurna Base Camp. Uh, that's where it's going to be coldest, at least for the first uh, hour or so as our body starts to heat up as we're walking towards the base camp and before the sun starts to hit. So, uh, and, and at that point, yeah, we could, we could expect temperatures as low as minus 10, maybe even minus 15 if we get a particularly cold day. Uh, what I would recommend to, uh, to, to, uh, to you is to just uh, observe the, the gear list. So we've, we've put in exactly what you need in order for this to be comfortable because it all sounds cold when we're sitting, you know, in our t-shirts and, and thinking how on earth are we going to manage that. But um, if you look at the, uh, the gear list that we provided and you kind of, you go through it uh, and we're, we're, we're of course um, available to help you guys uh, decipher some of the jargon um, as well. Uh, it, it really is quite manageable and it, it adds a little bit of, uh, of spice to and, and excitement to this, uh, this, this experience. Um, so yeah, I think that, uh, that pretty much answers that question. Um, I do, I have a, a, another question, which is uh, about altitude um, and how high this is and whether altitude might be an issue. Um, the, the answer to that is, um, that we, the highest, uh, possible, uh, altitude that we are going to reach on this trek is Annapurna base camp. That's 4,130 meters. Um, altitude related illness, and I'll explain that, I'll explain what that is very quickly. So basically as we go up into higher altitude, our bodies, uh, 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 so, so the atmosphere starts to have uh, 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 pressure in the atmosphere starts to be released. So basically what that does is it causes there to be less oxygen 
in the atmosphere and and consequently as we breathe and although we breathe completely normal so you actually feel like your 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 uh, your your lungs are just as full as they are at sea level but the density of 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 the oxygen in the air that you're breathing is a little bit less so what happens is your body compensates for that by producing more red blood cells. And the process of doing that is called acclimatization. So that's when we say we're acclimatizing, it basically means that our body is starting to, uh, to produce some more red blood cells. On a trek like this, we don't really experience any real exposure to altitude, but for a very brief period between when we go from Machu Puchare base camp, which is at 3,700 meters. Usually people start to get the very mildest of symptoms around 3,500 meters, but we would have already acclimatized slowly getting there. So it's very, very rare for anybody to feel anything at all. Um, and then, uh, so the only exposure that we get to any kind of altitude is actually between uh, Machu Puchari base camp and Annapurna base camp. And, uh, and, 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 and it's for a very limited amount of time. So we've never actually had any experience with altitude-related illness on this trek. Um, although sometimes it can happen, and usually it, mild symptoms are usually just a, a little bit of a headache and uh, a, a, at this altitude, um, and, 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 and that can be easily treated with, uh, with some just basic painkillers and to stay well hydrated, of course, is the most important thing, and to eat well is the most important thing. But, uh, but like I said, this is, it's, it's very mild at, on, at this altitude. Uh, got another question over here. Um, what is the latest date time frame to enroll? Okay, so somebody here is an entrepreneur. Yes, I know what that means. <laughs> Very much so. Uh, so Annapurna Base Camp, it depends when you want to do it. Um, our, our most popular trip happens in, uh, we have the April window and the November window. Um, and we were highly recommending to people uh, to, to kind of book into the April window because uh, the weather tends to be, I mean, in November it's also great, but the April window uh, is just, it's more vibrant. The Pokhara is more vibrant because they're just, there's more, more things are happening. There are uh, festivals happening around as well at the same time. So uh, it just makes it, I feel like April season can be a little bit more fun, but November is just as, as, as great. Um, and the, the, we, we run a first come kind of first served, uh, uh, system and, uh, and that's because we limit the number of places on our team. So the maximum number of people we take on this trek is 12. Uh, and we, because we want it to be personal, we want to make sure that you each get the kind of attention that, uh, that is, uh, necessary to, uh, to feel confident in, uh, in pursuing a trek like this. So, uh, so we don't, we don't really enable more than 12 people. The only time we've ever made exceptions for that is if somebody who's already coming on the trip and then like their, their husbands or girlfriends or, you know, brothers or sisters or somebody who, who's related to somebody who's on the trip, like really wants to go, then we might make an exception for one or two extra people. But outside of that, it's always, it's, it's 12 people and we're quite, we're quite strict about that. Um, so I would say, um, Try not to wait too long <laughs> is my answer, um, but we'll keep you posted. Uh, and we've I've just taken a note of, of, of who's asking. So if, if you are interested in, uh, in that, we'll let you know when places start to run out and, uh, and, and then you can make your decisions then. Right now, I'd say it's still, it's, it's early, but it's not too early. Like we have trips that are, you know, that, are, that have been booked up for June, uh, 2021 that are fully booked. So it, it really is uh, a matter of like, we, it's, it's, it can be quite unpredictable. So you, you can still wait a little bit, but don't wait too long. And right now what we've done to make it as easy as possible for people is we've reduced uh, usually our, our uh, uh, booking uh, uh, requirements are to put a 20% deposit on the trip uh, in order to book your place. And then the rest is paid up 60 days before the trip. But uh, because of, COVID, what we've done is we've reduced the booking fees, uh, the, the booking deposit down to just 100 euros. So that's, um, uh, so it's, it's quite a small sum to, 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 to reserve your spot. And then uh, over and above that, uh, what we've done is we've enabled even the deposit, which was previously not transferable, to be transferable up to 30 days before the trip if you need to move to another trip. So what I would say is if you were pretty keen on this one, book it. 
because you can actually just then at a later stage, closer to the date, you can move move it around. So if the April one doesn't work for you, you can move it to the November one, and 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 we try to be as flexible as possible with that. Um, also, we're going to be sending out the, to all of you a uh, uh, over over the over and above the uh, the 100 euro deposit uh, to reserve your place. We're also sending over a uh, a, uh, a promo code. Uh, which will give you a discount on the overall experience and we'll be sending that over to you uh so that's a and that's for 150 euros so that's over and above uh the the uh, the reduced deposit so uh, uh i would say take the opportunity do it and then uh we can always move things around if uh if and when we have to um so got another question about accommodation on the trip uh what can you what what can we expect good question right uh so in Kathmandu and Pokhara, so we, we have two nights spent in Kathmandu and one night spent in Pokhara. So these are both uh, cities that are down in the valley. Uh, at, uh, so you can expect to be staying in comfortable uh, accommodation. That would be what I would, what I would say would be roughly the equivalent of a, uh, like a, a, a comfortable hotel anywhere in the world. Of course, it's adventure, so don't expect the Marriott, uh, but, uh, but you can expect what, what you know, what would be a clean, comfortable uh, three-star hotel uh, anywhere in the world for, uh, for when we're down in the valley. Uh, so private, private showers, of course, uh, comfortable beds, uh, garden areas for both, for both of our hotels, um, uh, front desk, concierge, restaurant, breakfast area, all of that. Uh, that's, of course, uh, uh, what, you, what you can expect on this trip. Um, on the trail itself, we stay in tea houses. Uh, tea houses are uh, usually family-run establishments. They are they are basically small mom and pop kind of places. Uh, in the first two days, so in um, in uh, Gandruk and in Chumrung, uh, we stay at uh, at uh, new places that we've recently started working with, um, and they and we actually get to have a, uh, so it'll be two by two, and we actually get to have a, a, a private. Uh, bathroom for each room, which is very new, by the way. When we first started doing this trip, there was no private bathroom on, in any of the in any of the uh, tea houses. And if you go on the Everest Trail, there are no there are no private bathrooms. Period, um, except in Namshi Bazaar. So uh, then, uh, and and then once we get to, from Duban, uh, MBC, ABC, um, and and uh, and also Jinu uh, and and Bamboo. It's uh, it's a, a, a basically two by two in the room, uh, but there's the, then the bathrooms are going to be shared, and uh, all the tea houses also have a common room where there's a restaurant and uh, food is food is served by the kitchen of the of the tea house. Um, it's I would say it's comfortable. It's definitely adventure, so you're going to be uh, kind of a little bit outside your comfort zone, which I think is part of what this experience should be about. Uh, but I would say that it isn't so uncomfortable that people have ever had issue with it. On the contrary, people are actually quite pleasantly surprised. They find them to be uh, reasonably uh, clean. Uh, the one, the, the, especially the accommodations that we work with, um, people have, have only ever given us positive feedback about it. But of course, expectations have to be set uh, as to what, um, uh, you know, where we're going. And it's, it's it, just think, think adventure and you'll actually be positively uh, surprised. Uh, so I've got another question here, which is what are the uh, inclusions and exclusions? Uh, great question. So we, we run, uh, we take over from Kathmandu International Airport. So we, we pick you up from the airport and everything from that point onwards in order to do the itinerary is on us. So what that means is that from pickup at the airport, uh, uh, you, you have your, of course, uh, all the transportation, the local travel, so flights from uh, from Kathmandu to Pokhara and then back to Kathmandu, um, all meals throughout. So that's three meals per day plus the uh, plus the, the the tea houses um, that we that we visit uh, in between to stop for breaks, uh, plus uh, two liters of uh, of is it two three liters of water uh, per day per person uh, that we that we get for you, which is bottled water. So we're not we're not doing any of that like. Um, you know, sourcing the local water and boiling it. We're actually getting bottled water because we feel it's safer um, for all of you. Um, so all of that is is on us. Also, the the welcome meal in Kathmandu, 
and the city tour in Kathmandu and the, the, the dinner with the team, with the whole team uh, in Pokhara and also our final dinner together in Kathmandu on the way back is also all included. Uh, what is excluded in the meals would only be uh, any alcoholic drinks uh, that anybody uh, would like to order. We say that. Sometimes they're also included. It, you know, we, we see <laughs> it's very difficult for us. You know, it's like we have these rules and we're like, oh, it shouldn't be included. But then we get them like, you know what? It's okay. Um, we want to, we want to, you know, we want everybody to be happy. So there's that. Um, and, and, and yeah, so, uh, so, so what's, what's excluded from the trip. And of course there's the, the trekking fees and, and, and the permits and the licenses and all of that is taken care of. What is excluded is your international flights and your personal gear. So your, your, the clothes that you wear, the trekking boots and, and, and all of that. Uh, and, uh, but you can also, there are certain things that you could rent locally and we're very happy to, to help you guys with shopping and depending on where you're based, uh, we also get you some pretty good discounts on things. And so we're very happy to, to, to make those recommendations to you. We'll also be providing you with a gear list and uh, a separate guide that explains in more detail, uh, the different things that are on the gear list so that when you actually go to the store to buy something, if you're not buying it from, from one of our partners, um, you can, you, you know, so, so you know exactly what you want, because, uh, what tends to happen, especially with first timers is that they'll go into these stores and then they'll get upsold everything under the sun just because it's their first time and they don't really know what they're buying. And so the salesman kind of hones in on that. So we'll give you a, a like a, a proper guide that explains in detail exactly what you're looking for, exactly, you know, kind of the do's and don'ts, uh, what to look out for when you're buying something to make it as easy as possible for you to make those purchases. Um, oh, there's, the only other thing that's also not included is the visa. Uh, it's usually $15 and that's uh, on entrance to uh, Nepal. So everybody, I think everybody except for Indian passport holders need a visa, uh, but everybody except Indian passport holders can also obtain a visa on arrival. Of course, uh, that is not the case at this present moment due to COVID-19, but uh, under normal circumstances, um, you, uh, everybody, most of us can, and actually everybody except for Indian passport holders, uh, purchase visas on arrival. Indian passport holders don't need to do anything at all. They just walk straight. Um, so that is, uh, uh, that's the answer to that. I hope, I hope I answered your question. If there, if you, if you want to follow up on that, just feel free to just shoot something over to me and I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, to go through with that as well. Oh, and of course, trinkets and things that you, you know, purchase on the side. That's, uh, that's on you. Um, great. So, uh, there, there's, a, a another question that, uh, uh, that's, that's come up and that's one about, uh, kind of your fitness level, you know, how fit do you need to be in order to, uh, do a trip like this? Right. Uh, so the, for, for, for us, I, it's it's not about how fit you need to be. It's about how it's it's about personal comfort. Um, there's no amount of burpees or squats or whatever that you need to do in order to 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 feel comfortable doing this trip. Um, it's it it really is all about you just feeling comfortable with yourself. And so with that that can mean different things for di to different people. I've seen people uh, at Annapurna Base Camp who you know you would think wouldn't be able to go up a flight of stairs let alone do this experience. Uh, and I've seen people who have done, you know, far, far uh, uh, more than that uh, and who are actual athletes and they're also there as well. So it really, it, it really depends on you and how you're, and, and, and kind of how you're feeling. What I would say though, is that coming to trek in these places, it's great to think of this as a pilgrimage. And when you think of it that way, you feel like you need to kind of prepare yourself for this pilgrimage because you really are going into a very special place. So, um, right. So uh, uh, I, I, I think that this is something that you just have to kind of uh, uh, take it, interpret that in whatever way you want. Some people take this as an opportunity to say, okay, we're doing this in a couple of months time. So I'm going to use this as a chance to get fit. And that becomes a motivating factor and all the power to you. If that's what you think. Um, if there's some people who, who kind of just want to wing it and see how they go and some, you know, they tend to do well as well. If that, if you're comfortable with that, you can do that. The, the kind of the minimum requirement would be to walk, just to be able to walk for several hours with a light backpack. 
if you can do that, you can more or less do this experience. And, uh, and, and that's what I would say on that. But we also provide you with, uh, with a fitness and nutrition guide so that you can be, uh, uh, um, uh, you, and, and, the, and, the, and the kind of the exercises that we, uh, that we have, we put in are just stuff that you can add into your daily life. So nothing, you know, you don't, we don't recommend anything that you can't just do at home with no extra, you know, uh, uh, with no gear and no personal trainers or anything like that, just things to get yourselves ready. And what I would say, if there, if there's one thing to focus on with exercise, uh, I would say focus on your core. If you're going to choose one thing to focus on, and that's only because what tends to make people feel uncomfortable on long walks is lower back pain. And lower back pain is usually uh, caused by uh, a weak core. So if there's one thing that you do want to think about, you know, in terms of what can I incorporate in the lead up to this trip uh, to make myself feel more comfortable, I would just say, uh, think of, of, uh, of, of strengthening your core a little bit, just so that your lower back doesn't feel uh, the strain of, of walking for several hours on varied terrain with a backpack. Um, and then there's a question about beginners. So I don't consider myself... Uh, Okay. So, so, okay. Basically the, the premise of the question is, uh, uh, that, you know, I, I, they, somebody's asking if they, if they can join without a uh, previous mountain experience. And the app, the answer to that question is absolutely yes. Uh, you can, um, the, 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 the way that we design the, our programs and the way that we, and, and, and I don't just mean that in terms of walking, but I also mean that in terms of preparing you beforehand and, and also kind of guiding you on what happens afterwards as well. It's all designed around the idea that you are doing this for the first time. So uh, the guides that we, that we provide are very detailed um, so that you can feel comfortable uh, and, and you're actually learning something new for the first time. Uh, our, our, uh, uh, our, our, uh, our team uh, is always available to answer your questions anytime whether it's a and, and there's no such thing as a stupid question sometimes okay but it's very 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 rare the, the like the bar is way down <laughs> and um and yeah so so it's it, it so 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 from that aspect kind of the preparation aspect we assume that everybody is doing this for the first time um and then once we're actually on the trail it's it, like I said uh, initially. It's about us being on holiday, having sharing an amazing experience. If you're a beginner, that'll mean something to you, and you'll, you'll definitely find a home with us. Um, if you're uh, if you're if you're experienced already, and you're coming for the because this is a trek that's been on your bucket list, you'll also find a home with us too. And actually, you'll find that that these these two kind of the beginners plus the people who've been uh, uh, been on other treks as well, will will actually benefit a lot from each other uh, in the way that we kind of run this experience. But one thing I would say to beginners who are always feeling nervous, one of the questions that we always get that isn't up here, but uh, it, it's relevant to what we're talking about, is people always go, oh, well, I'm not sure if I can keep up with the rest of the group. And the truth is that on all of our experiences, including Annapurna Base Camp, I've never had a problem speeding people up. I've only ever had a problem slowing people down, uh, and that and, and that includes people who would who who asked specifically about you know worrying that they're going to uh, uh, slow down the group. Um, we we want to walk very slowly. We want to take our time. We want to take in the views. I mean, we're here on our holiday. We're here to experience this. There is no you know we're not the co the community of you know being the first person and showing everybody what we can do. And that's not us. If, if that's what you're looking for, that's somewhere else, unfortunately. But with us, it's more about being inclusive, sharing this experience together, talking about it, uh, uh, stopping along the way, taking great photos, uh, and really taking in as much of this epic backdrop uh, as, 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 as possible. Because then we go back to our lives where it's already hectic and it's already a rat race and it's already about elbowing each other to get to the front. And, uh, you know, that's, that's not how we, we want to, you know, take you away from that. We want to take you away from that, not just physically uh, in terms of what you're seeing, but also in the community that you, you're investing yourself in. So uh, I hope that answers your question. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of start to, uh, to, to wrap up slowly, but if anybody has any more questions, just feel free to drop them in here uh, and I will uh, uh, tackle them before we close. But if, if, if nothing else, 
Um, I just want to uh, quickly say to you know thank you all for uh, for attending this today. It's uh, it's a great pleasure for me to do this. Uh, I love talking about mountains, and I know that during COVID it's been a bit difficult for a lot of us. Uh, and so actually being able to do this uh, has actually helped me as well um, because I really do love to be out there. And uh, it's one of the it's one of the great. You know, I'm actually wearing a T-shirt here that says the Himalayas are calling. I don't know if you can see that, but they but they really are. Um, and, uh, and, and yeah, so, uh, we, we will be sending out an email as soon as this is wrapped up. Uh, it's going to include, uh, the, vi the video itself so that you can feel free to share it with anybody you like. Uh, we're also going to be sending out a promo code that you can use. And if you have a friend who wants to join as well, you can share the promo code with them and that's for 150 euros. Um, and uh, that's valid until the end of the month. And also we have uh, the deposits for all 2021 trips are actually just 100 euros. So if you are considering this trip, uh, do book it up and remember that you can transfer that deposit if as we get closer to the time, you feel like you can actually attend that trip, but you may wanna be doing something else. So we can definitely uh, be as flexible as we can possibly be for you guys. We never started this community thinking that it was going to be a, you know, it's not a, it's not a work thing. It really is us sharing our passion and, uh, and we want to make it as easy as possible for people to realize that they too can find a transformative experience for themselves in the outdoors. So on that note, I want to thank you all again, uh, tell you namaste and hope to see you guys all in Kathmandu uh, before you know it. Have a wonderful day.